Welcome to Mass Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. And I do apologise for my absence, but it was my father's 80th birthday on the 15th of August. And we all uh, went down to Diani. And uh, I'll show you some of the photographs in a minute. It really was a pleasure celebrating his birthday, being there with my two brothers. A total of seven grandchildren, of which three are mine. And uh, we had a lovely time. We took a boat ride twice, uh, rather gentle, inside the reef with the young kids. Um, it's very quiet down there, I'm afraid. And uh, the staff, we were staying in a house, fantastic staff, lovely seafood, fantastic chef. It's called Watamo. If you ever care to visit, uh, and it can fit in a lot of people very comfortably. Uh, the staff told us we, the f we were the first guests in three months. I put up a photograph of the beach, um, a couple of photographs of the beach that I took, and then I couldn't resist uh, this story, how those colour block bikinis took over the beach. Um, and uh, These are triangle swimsuits are selling like crazy, and Bloomberg is talking about how it happened worth reading. Um, George Santayana, the truth is cruel but it can be loved and it makes free those who have loved it. And the world is not respectable, it is mortal, tormented, confused, deluded forever, but it is shot through with beauty, with love, with glints of courage and laughter, and in these the spirit blooms timidly struggles to the light amid the thorns. Political reflections, Syria, civil war, civilians in Damascus pay the price for those in the provinces in conflict's balance of horror. This is Robert Fisk. It's a balance of horror. Bombard Duma in the suburbs of Damascus to protect the civilians of Kifraya and Foa in Idlib province teach the rebels that the Syrian government is as ruthless as ever, that it will not tolerate a threat to the capital's water supply or rebel mortar explosions in the centre of the city, and Duma pays the price. A hundred dead under the bombs of the Syrian government air force, then a second raid while rescuers search for the victims of the first. That's what the Israelis did when they bombarded West Beirut in the summer of 1982. Who learns from whom in the Middle East? But in civil wars, both sides learn from each other. For the opposition in Syria, and defining even the opposition is difficult enough these days, the regime's onslaught on Duma was an unprovoked act of savagery, culminating in the bombing of busy market. For the regime it was a furious response to the mortars that exploded in central Damascus five days ago, killing six people, and more seriously suggesting that the government could not even protect its people in the very centre of its capital. That's how civil wars play out. There are no good guys except the civilians, of course, and the more cornered each side becomes, the more they strike at the innocent. I concluded by saying what existed before was infinitely better than what Syria has become, and the consequences of this war means Europe is being invaded by refugees. ISIS beheads elderly chief of antiquities in ancient Syrian city, official says, Islamic State militants hung the body of Khaled Assad, 82, in a main square of Palmyra. Just imagine that such a scholar who gave such memorable services to the place and to history would be beheaded and his corpse still hanging from one of the ancient columns in the centre of the square. Put up a photograph of the sunset over Palmyra, taken from the Kalat Ibn Man castle. Ambassador Rice uh, uh, tweeted the statement on the peace agreement in South Sudan, and I responded by saying the inability by leadership to bring this to an end 
Prima facie disqualifies from leadership, in my opinion. Aki Abe, Pres uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's wife, visited the Tokyo War Shrine. This is the Yasikuni Shrine, days after husband stayed away. Um, this is a controversial place of worship, 70th anniversary of the end of World War II, posted a picture of herself standing next to a senior priest on her Facebook page on Tuesday. While her previous Yasukuni trip didn't draw any public expressions of anger from China or South Korea, Tuesday's visit comes amid reports that the Prime Minister is considering a meeting with Xi Jinping in Beijing next month. Rather than making a personal visit on August 15, Shinzo Abe made a donation to the shrine that honours millions of Japanese war dead including 14 wartime leaders convicted as Class A war criminals. Criticism by China and South Korea of his statement the previous day was muted, despite Abe trying to draw a line under official apologies for the war, saying Japan shouldn't be expected to continually apologize for a conflict that ended 70 years ago. The euro, uh, when I came in, was just below 110.50. It's now at 11061. Dollar index around the 96.87 level. Japanese yen, 124.25. Swiss e, 0.9770. The pound, 156.78. Aussie um, is at 0.7356. India rupee, 65.365. South Korean won 1186.36, the real 346.78, Egyptian pound 782.57, and the rand 12.9060, that's a 2011 low. Dollar index, I think it's headed to 110, let me put up a three month chart. Euro dollar, uh, recent strengthening back above 110, I think is correlated to yuan weakening um, because uh, the one is the if you look at the composite index, um, it has a big share of the euro, as it were. Jamie at Reuters, a sterling rise after yesterday or day before yesterday's inflation data lifts trade weighted pound to new seven year high. That's a lot of tightening. And this is the same quandary that the US is facing. 10 year Swiss yield falls to negative 0.22%, the lowest since January. Commodity markets gold has popped higher to 11.22. As I said previously, I think it can go as high as 11.50, but I think it's going to go down into triple digits. OPEX Fragile 5 faced rising cost in the fight for oil market share. As oil prices slump to six year lows, the risks of worsening political turmoil are rising in the organization's most vulnerable nations. According to RBC Capital Markets, the most vulnerable nations, and they're calling them the Fragile Five, Algeria, Iraq, Libya, Nigeria, and Venezuela. The pain doesn't end there, with even Saudi Arabia facing its biggest budget deficit in almost three decades. Petromatrix GmbH says the plan to produce at full throttle was a strategic mistake. I couldn't agree more. Oil prices slumped near $40 a barrel in New York on August 14. Venezuela appears poised for a near-term crisis. I've been saying this for a while amid protests and shortages of basic goods as the country heads for parliamentary elections in December. The cost of insuring government's five-year bonds has rebounded to near a 12-year high. Libya's risks of further political chaos are among the highest in the organization, matched only by Iraq. Things have also intensified in Algeria as it faces a looming leadership transition, spurring the country last week to suggest an emergency OPEC meeting. I wrote about this several years ago. On the 10th of August, when I said the meltdown is coming, I'll put up a six month chart of crude oil. Uh, this is NYMEX uh, crude oil. I still think we're headed to below 40. I'll also put up a one year chart of copper, and I think that's going down as well. Sub Saharan Africa, the Atlantic tweeted an interactive map 
shows the real mind-boggling size of the African continent. You could fit China and the US into Africa with room to spare. Africa's massive 13.22 million square kilometers in fact, second largest continent in the world. Yet the familiar Mercato map does not actually reflect this reality. Demina advises is saying collapsing commodity prices could trigger an African spring with almost 30% of Africa's GDP dependent on the mining and energy sectors. The ongoing commodity price route, especially in oil and metal prices, raises the prospects of a destabilizing African spring in several commodity over-dependent nations. Coupled with already unresolved pre-existing political tensions, countries such as Libya, South Sudan, CAR, Republic of Congo, Chad, DR Congo, Lesotho and Guinea remain vulnerable to new political instability. Of this category, Libya and South Sudan, both already engulfed in violent conflicts, are very likely to see deep into civil chaos. Falling commodity prices combined with controversial upcoming polls in CAR, Republic of Congo, DR Congo and Guinea dramatically heightens the risk of new violent political conflict. And that's what I meant when I said on the 10th of August the meltdown is coming. I quoted Richard Kapuczynski as if the crowd disperses, goes home, does not reassemble. We say the revolution is over and I said the revolution is only just beginning. Wall Street Journal is talking about currencies of Africa's resource exporting economies taking a double hit as investors interpreted China's move as evidence that its growth slowdown was more severe than previously believed, implying that demand for commodities could drop further. Frontier market commodities exporters such as Ghana, Nigeria, Kazakhstan are likely to see further currency depreciation this year, says Charlie Robertson of Renaissance. As the dollar continues to strengthen, Robertson expects to see devaluations of 15% in Nigeria, I think that's undercooked, as much as 33% in Kazakhstan, nearly 10% in Kenya, and nearly 20% in Ghana. Uganda is unlikely to be among the countries benefiting from low oil prices, writes Nicholas Murillo. The low oil price environment will probably prompt companies to put off investment decisions, potentially holding back the already delayed commercialization of crude fields in Uganda. I wrote about this on the 8th of June when I wrote about the sub-Saharan African currency bloodbath. I said, I am afraid, I believe the dollar has now achieved escape velocity. Therefore, in my view, the trend is your friend. There's going to be more blood in the water. Salva Kiir is quoted by Radio Tamasuj of South Sudan, saying the freedom of press does not mean that you work against your country. And if anybody among them does not know this country has killed people, we will demonstrate it, it one day on. Then. South African all shares up 2.42% so far this year, bounced 0.45% yesterday. Dollar ran 12.90.47. My target has been 14 for quite a while. The rand is down 11% this year and at a 2001 low. The Egyptian stock, stock market EGX30 tumbled 2.58% yesterday. It's now down 17.11% and at 20-month lows. Forward prices suggest the currency of Nigeria will tumble 15% within six months and 25% over the next year. I couldn't agree more and I said this in January. So the currency is headed to 220 and Emma Fili's figure in the Dyke strategy is about to be overwhelmed by a tsunami. Well, he's managed to fend off the tsunami for a while, but he can't do it forever. The Nigerian all share is down 13.11% this year. The Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index is down 4.688% year to date. Mumia Sugar Company issued a profits warning yesterday 
expects profit to fall by more than a quarter in its financial year to end June due to a shortage of sugarcane and routine breakdowns at its plant. Sugarcane shortages necessitated closure of our factory for two and a half months from mid-October to December 2014, the company said. As a link for their share price data, everyone is waiting for the billion shillings that the government has promised, and furthermore for a clear uh, pathway out of this imbroglio. To buy bank customers to know their fate on September the 1st, there's 7,000 customers holding about 1.7 billion shillings of deposits in Dubai Bank. Um, KDIC says it will determine the most appropriate method of resolving the problems that led to the lender's failure. A Pan Africa Insurance Company reported first half profit after tax declined to 32.45%. Gross written premium was down to 2.59 billion from 2.77 billion. Investment income unchanged at 1.03 billion from 1.02 billion. Um, fair value gains were negative 548 million. They tend to punt the stock market more than others. Um, other operating income was 641.85 million, up about fourfold from the previous report. And that was on property sales. First half profit for tax down 16.75%. First half profit after tax down 32.45%. I think property sales have contributed considerably to their operating surplus gateway than they bought as opposed to loss in the period under review. My conclusions are soft earnings were bailed out by property sales. BOC Kenya reported first half profit after tax declined. 23.91 percent um, earnings per share down 23.91 percent interim dividend unchanged two shillings 20 cents revenue down 18 percent from prior year they're claiming due to cheap imports of oxygen and nitrogen profit after tax is down 24 percent due to rationalization of product pricing to retain market share exchange losses increasing provisioning and doubtful debts, they said. Limuru Tea also issued first half profit after tax down 51.81%, turnover down 11.62%, profit after tax down 51.81%, earnings per share down 51.9%. First half of 2015, 15% decrease in May tea volumes compared to the first half of 2014. Tea prices soared first half 2015. Volumes went down just 11.62%. Therefore, these results are not only very poor, but a conundrum. Kenya, this, the finance minister says he's going to stabilize the currency by tightening the deficit. Kenya shilling has popped higher all the way to 10, popped lower to 103.10. Nairobi all share is minus 6.91% but has rallied 3.98% since the 5th of August low. NSE 20 is down 12.33%, but 165 points above the 5th of August 2015 multi-year low. Good to be back. Sorry for my absence. And, uh, welcome back.